Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. I've come out into our neighbouring field of wheat to make a corn dolly. Now traditionally these are made with the very very last few stalks that's left at the end of the harvest. But our harvest hasn't happened yet so I'm going to borrow some from the edges. It's important to be respectful if you're harvesting wheat from a field because after all it does belong to somebody and in my case I'm going to go for this little clump here. They're not actually part of the field proper, they've escaped onto the edges and I don't think I'll be doing anybody a disservice by borrowing a few stalks. I only need between five and ten ears of wheat and I'm going to choose long straight ones and clip them off quite near to the ground. It's worth remembering that most of the strains of wheat that are grown in Britain today aren't the varieties that would have been used for corn dollies in the past. Those were a lot sl sl more slender and a lot taller. But ours will be absolutely fine for our purposes. I'm going to clip a few off and I'm going to take it back to the garden where it's a little bit quieter so that we can make our corn dolly. So when you make a corn dolly, the first thing to do is make sure you've chosen your ears of wheat carefully. Most of the wheat grown in British fields today isn't perfect. It's grown to be short and strong and robust and carry a really large ear of wheat, which means that you've got lots of leaf joints and the stem is relatively short. It's going to be fine for what we need, but do your best to choose ones that are straight, slim and just nicely proportioned. So we're going to start off with five nice stems with good ears of wheat on. You will want a few more for um, filling in later. But for the moment, bundle your five together, grab either a bit of string, or if I'm making these in the field, I quite often use a stalk of grass, and just tie the bottoms together quite nice and tightly. We can clip off any bits later. So flip it over. And you want to splay these out like the arms of a compass. So one, two, three, and your last one is going to have two bits. So you've got your stem splayed out like the arms of a compass, and one of them has got two stalks on. The spare stalk is your weaver, and all we're going to do is take it across to the next one in our um, available grouping. So now this one's got two in it. This is your weaver. Cross it over. Now this has got two in it. That's your weaver. Cross it over. One more and we're all the way around. Now we want to be expanding the bottom of our corn dolly. So it's important for the first few turns that each bend comes very slightly outside the ones you've done before. So crossing over, crossing over, crossing over. Sometimes this means that you have to bend out and round to make it work. That's fine. Just try your best to keep it even. It should become quite automatic after a while. If you're finding your stems are hard to bend, it's possible that they're dry. So occasionally it's worth dunking your stems in water before you start. But again, if I'm making things out in the field, that's not normally a problem. Out and round, out and round, out and round. <laughs> the clunking noise is me hitting the camera. I tried to do this by myself the other day and I was hitting it so much that I've roped Gareth into play cameraman but we're having the same trouble. Long stems are always tricky. So it's quite a straightforward motion. It doesn't matter whether you turn the work to make it easier for you or whether you just work round the points of the compass. But it's always the piece you've moved over gives you two. The one you haven't used is your next weaver. So we've got a little bit of cracking happening there. That is a function of this type of modern wheat. It can't be helped much. Just watch out for it and try and minimise the effects if you possibly can. So when... Oh, that's a tricky bit. Oh, no, I've snapped a piece of completely there. If you have that happen, the easiest way to deal with it <coughs> is snip off the bottom. I'm just going to bend down and grab another piece of wheat. <coughs> if you snap a thin bit off, you can usually 
stick it right into the middle of the old thread, the old stalk. That's how you join in a new piece if you run out anyway, so don't panic if you get a breakage. Now if I tip this up, you should be able to see that we're starting to get a nice spiral developing. You're just going to keep making this until it's as wide as you want it to be. I'm just going to go around two or three more times. Always bringing my weaver just slightly to the outside of the square as I make it and that will make it bigger each time. When you're ready to make your work start to get becoming smaller, so I'll just do one more. So we're sitting on the outside, we're bending out around. When I want to start making it smaller, all I need to do is bring that to the inside. And now each of my folds is coming in one at a time. Now at some point, your stalks are gonna run short. So we'll add more material exactly as we did when we dealt with that broken one. Get it as far as you can and then we definitely need a new bit, so again, just going to bend down, grab another stalk, pull off any leaves, clip off the top, stick the new bit inside the old bit, and keep weaving. Going to need another one there. Aha, my glamorous assistant. Thank you very much, Gav. <coughs> inside the thick end of the straw and you should be able to keep weaving quite seamlessly. So always moving just that little bit to the inside each time. Watch out for those leaf joints, they really are the tricky bits. In this case if I fold that there it's going to snap so I'm just going to accept a slightly less than perfect join there. I have another stalk, thank you very much. Cooperate. The other way to do it is just to thread your new piece through into the weave and keep going. There's always more than one way to get there. I'm going to need one more. another one that's not gonna and when you get to the very top just keep going even though you're running out of room it's going to work up into a heavy braid Just keeping crossing by the points of the compass, keep going round and round. When it runs out completely, what I tend to do at this point is pick my three best ones and swap to a plait. So just like you would plaiting hair. This is a very simple corn dolly. There are some incredibly complex designs, but this is the sort of thing that you could make if you're out in the fields, just to leave a little token for the harvest spirits. You can also make these with green rushes, stiff grasses, um, art drawers. There's all sorts of things you can make these with. And I just think it's a bit sad that fields don't have corn dollies left for them anymore. So it amuses me to make them. So once you've got your little plas at the top, twist it round, tuck it through. If you've still got 
a loose end that you can use to help secure it. Great, if not, another bit of string will do the trick. I'm not sure if that's going to work. Let's try that. Is that going to wiggle through there? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. No, not easily. We'll go back for a little bit of string on this one just to make it fast because I don't want you standing here for ages while I work. And I've lost my string. Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> Try and look all organised. So a bit of grass for a bit of cord twisted up out of something out in the fields will work just as well and then just tidy up the ends so scissors aren't absolutely essential but they do make a neater job of clipping off loose ends I quite like to decorate corn dollies as well so you can decorate them with a few flowers or a few of the first blackberries but there we are there's your corn dolly, traditionally made to thank the spirits of the harvest and in some cases to give the harvest spirits somewhere to live until the next year when they get ploughed back into the ground. Today they're just really nice things to make, quick and easy to teach children to do. Why not make one, leave it somewhere. Maybe the local genius loci will enjoy it and if not the local children and dog walkers certainly will.